Hello, everyone. We hope that you and those around you are safe and healthy throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. We've had the opportunity to bring together crisis management leaders to discuss strategies for how they're looking to bring their teams back to the office. We invite you to listen to our recorded webinar on that topic. We've been actively working on the IBOR transition through our IBOR working group. We continue to advocate for forward-looking SOFR term rate, but are also doing analysis looking at alternative calculation methodologies. Our DLPC framework that was outlined last year has now actually been used in live transactions, uh, proving interoperability for trade transactions, and we encourage you to listen to our recorded webinar on that topic. For supply chain finance, we've had the opportunity to engage with the FASB and IFRS, and we think that that's moving towards a good outcome where there will not be additional regulations on uh, the treatment of supply chain finance as debt. It will remain as trade payables as we know it. We're also working to publish a guidance paper for practices uh, through our partnership with the GSCFF. On the payments front, we've launched our Global Payments Industry Council, or our GPIC, which will provide strategic guidance to BAF on the issues most important to the cross-border payments community. Regionally within Europe, we're gearing up for several consultations this summer on the AML Fifth Money Laundering Directive, as well as de-risking, and doing follow-up on our Basel III consultation. In the Middle East and North Africa, the Buna Working Group has been established to look at the local clearing system or the regional clearing system that will include up to 20 MENA currencies along with US dollars, Euro, and RMB. In Asia, we've been engaged through the APFF and also with the MAS on their project Veritas, looking at artificial intelligence, data analytics, and also how to apply digital initiatives to trade-based money laundering. We have reestablished our Africa Council, which we're very excited about. It will be led by co-chairs from Access Bank in Nigeria and Standard Bank in South Africa, and they'll focus on corresponding bank de-risking, trade digitization, the impact of Basel on capital and liquidity, as well as training and education. We want to congratulate our future leaders class of 2020. We had 30 individuals from 14 countries graduate in the fifth cohort, and they were able to provide webinars on their projects covering SWIFT GPI, sustainability, IBOR transition, and faster payments. We encourage you to listen to those. Last but not least, I know you're wondering when we will get together again in person, and we will do so when we think it is safe to do it. Uh, and so our programs for the rest of the year 2020 will be done virtually. We hope that you'll take the opportunity to join us for some of our virtual conferences and workshops. Until then, we encourage you to get involved in the BAF working groups and our committees, check our website, listen to our recorded webinars, look for our white papers and our comment letters, and most of all, stay safe, stay healthy until we can see each other again. Thanks again. BAF continues to track regulatory and policy developments that have an impact on the transaction banking business. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a number of regulatory and policy changes that have delayed timetables or made modifications to regulatory practices. One such delay has been the Basel Committee's delay in implementation of the 2017 Basel reforms moving the deadline for implementation from the 1st of January 2022 to the 1st of January 2023. This additional year for implementation means that we have additional time to engage in advocacy before the regulatory community. This summer, we will be following up on our response to the European Commission's consultation on Basel implementation, providing the Commission with new data, case studies, and bolstering our argument for the need for the European Commission to practice discretion when implementing the Basel III reforms. We invite you to engage with us as we engage in advocacy in Europe and other jurisdictions before the implementation of the Basel III um, deadline at the beginning of 2023. 
Another issue that has been close to many of you has been the transition away from IVORS to new alternate reference rates. In January, we launched a global working group that was tasked with three core priorities. The first has been member education. There are a number of webinars and reference material available on our website. We invite you to visit those. Um, second, and perhaps most important, has been our engagement and advocacy with the ARC, who is tasked with the production of the SOFR, the rate that USD LIBOR will likely transition to. At present, there is no forward-looking term structure within SOFR, and that has been the core of our advocacy before the ARC. Our working group has been working to develop a white paper which will make the case for the need for a forward-looking term rate for trade finance products, specifically discounted products. Um, but it will also be looking at the feasibility of transitioning to other alternative calculation methodologies for SOFR. Later this month, um, the white paper that we issue will also include responses from a number of member banks to the survey on IBOR transition. We invite you to please reach out to me with any questions or comments on these two policy issues. And if there are other issues on the regulatory or policy front that are impacting the transaction banking business, please connect with us so we can better engage as, uh, as an industry association. I look forward to being in touch and thank you for, for engaging with us. Hello everyone. Nice to hear from you or see you all again. I just wanted to give you some quick highlights on what we've been doing at uh, BAF with respect to trade over the last three months. Uh, you probably know we've hosted quite a few webinars on various topics related to COVID-19, specifically on force majeure, on operationalizing um, trade without paper, um, on paperless trade, the journey, on some of the ECA's work that they've been doing around um, special programs for um, COVID-19 situation. So on that note, um, we are going to also be hosting a supply chain uh, webinar in the upcoming future, and we will get information out to all of you about that. Uh, but we have at BAF spent a lot of time working on supply chain these last few months, having met with the FASB and the IFRS, and now the IFRS has actually put out a um, tentative agenda decision that they're requesting comments on, and BAP will be providing comments. Essentially, they have decided to um, not request any additional changes to the standards because they believe that the IFRS current standards are sufficient. Um, and so they're just waiting to hear from public comments. That is um, the first order of business. We are also working with the GSCFF, of which BAP is a founding member, to finalize the payables finance paper that will be published, as well as a media campaign um, around best practices and good practices and the benefits of uh, the payables finance programs. So be on the lookout for that. Um, finally, we've been doing some work in the digitization space and um, have been specifically looking at the eSign Act, which is a U.S. Act that was enacted um, a number of years ago but what we'd like to do is get it to be edited such that e-negotiable instruments would be permitted um, in an electronic format. Currently, that is not the case. And paper, paper um, negotiable instruments require um, ink, uh, ink signed uh, paper. And we're trying to move to a point where that is no longer required given the current um, challenges we've had with moving physical paper around. So that's where we are for um, the beginning of July 2020. Look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you. Hello. Over the last few months, BAPT has driven forward initiatives in payments, innovation, and financial crime compliance. 
the cornerstone of BAF's new payment strategy, the Global Payments Industry Council, met for the first time in late May and again in early July. The primary topics of discussion were council governance and its payments agenda for the next 18 months. BAF's Global Working Group on Cross-Border Faster Payments prepared an outline of its white paper and is now drafting content. The paper will address drivers, barriers, potential solutions, and recommended next steps in achieving cross-border faster payments. On June 1st, BAF published the initial release of the Distributed Ledger Payment Commitment, or DLPC, technical and business best practices. The best practices introduce standards for the use of a binding, legally enforceable payment commitment on any blockchain platform. The DLPC is already being leveraged in trade finance transactions, as discussed during BAF's June 2nd webinar. The best practices and the webinar both may be found on the BAF website. This summer, BAFT is engaging in a number of advocacy efforts. It is preparing letters in response to the OCC's consultation on digital banking, the EC's consultation on a proposed new anti-money laundering framework, and the EBA's consultation on de-risking in Europe. Please contact me, Samantha Pelosi, if your organization would like to participate in any of these advocacy activities. Thank you.